A client where a physical user is involved is called an interactive client in OpenID Connect terms. In this quick start, we'll see how to configure and build a solution involving an interactive client. I'm Roland Guit for Duende Software, the company behind Identity Server. The client will be an ASP.NET Core application using Razor Pages. It will delegate the login process to the identity provider. When login is successful, that will issue an identity token that contains the personal information of the user in the form of claims. Note that this is a different kind of token than we used for the API in the quick start using client credentials. So that was an access token. I'm recommending you watch that quick start first, by the way, because this one will build on top of that. The full code of the quick start is here. And if you'd like to read through the steps, you'll find them here. OK, let's get going. First of all, some kind of UI is needed in our identity server project, because pages like a login page are needed now. To add that, we can use an identity server template called ISUI. This template doesn't contain a ready-to-go project, but just the UI assets. Just call .NET new ISUI in the folder of the identity server project we ended up with in the client credentials tutorial. As an alternative, you could also use one of the other templates that already contain the UI, such as ISMM. Watch the video about templates for more information. ISUI will add a pages folder with Razor pages to the project, as well as a www root folder with some static assets. The next step is to configure ASP.NET Core so that it uses the Razor pages. It turns out the code for that is already in hosting extensions.cs. We only have to remove the comments. Under Pages, there is a lot of UI supporting all kinds of identity server functionality. Let's take a look at the login page. There's the Razor with the markup, and here's the code behind file containing the code to handle everything around login. I would recommend to put in some time to see how it works. Mainly it uses the standard ASP.NET Core authentication system to sign a user in. But some identity server specific classes are used to help with that. Most of the time clients need to know who the user is. It needs user claims that are contained in identity scopes. To add identity scopes, open up config.cs and add the scopes under Identity Resources. OpenID is a standard OpenID Connect scope that will result in the identity token with the user's unique subject ID claim if requested. Profile also is a standard scope that will result in user claims like name, city and website being returned. For a full description of it, please see here. It's also possible to add your own custom scopes here that cover your own claims. But for now we stick to OpenID and Profile. Here's the line of code that configures Identity Server to use the new identity scopes. The UI just added also contains some test users that we can add by adding this line of code. Normally you would use your own user store for this. These are just meant for testing purposes. There's a user called Bob with password Bob with some claims, and Alice with password Alice. We also need a client configuration for the Razor Pages application we're building in a second. It is similar to the client we already have, but instead of setting allowed grant types to client credentials, this one uses code, which is short for authorization code. This flow uses back-channel requests to keep the token out of the browser's reach. Please look here to find out more about how this works. Authorization code needs a redirect URI, a URI where the tokens can be delivered when the login process completes successfully. This endpoint is created automatically by the OpenID Connect handler we're going to add to the client in a second. The same goes for the post logout redirect URI that will be used to notify the client if the user logs out at the identity provider. And of course we have to allow the client to request the new identity scopes. 
Note that these are just references to two constant strings, one with the value OpenID and one with Profile. That's it for the configuration of the Identity Provider. Next part is about the client. Add an ASP.NET Core web application to the solution. That will use Razor Pages by default. Add the NuGet package Microsoft ASP.NET Core Authentication OpenID Connect. Now before I continue, here's something important to understand about what happens when a user logs in. In the ASP.NET Core client, authentication handlers are registered under scheme names. Each scheme has actions, one of which is called challenge. When a scheme is challenged, it means the login process is triggered. In our case, that's where the identity server flow starts. The identity provider will handle the login process, such as the checking of the credentials. And when all goes well, the token is returned. When the token is received by the client, it will set a cookie in the browser containing the identity, the claims of the user. Once the cookie is set, the identity provider isn't needed anymore as long as the cookie is valid. This cookie mechanism requires another authentication handler with a corresponding scheme. And the action we need on that is called authenticate, which basically means return the current authenticated user. With that in mind, Let's set up authentication. First with a cookie handler, the scheme of which we give the name cookies. Next, the identity provider scheme is added, configuring it with an options object. First we have to tell it with which identity provider it should work, and specify the client ID and secret. The response we're expecting back is a code. That is the code used in authorization code flow to do the back-channel request with. By default, the handler will request the OpenID and Profile scope, but if you want to be specific about it, first clear the scopes and add them manually. If Map Inbound Claims is set to True, that's a default, the handler will try to automatically rename certain claims to names that Microsoft uses with their internal services. We want to keep them as is. A wise precaution is to disable telemetry, preventing the handler to expose that we use ASP.NET Core and the details around that. Finally, save tokens means that the tokens received from the identity provider will be saved in the authentication cookie, since these are needed later. Now that the two schemes are configured, ASP.NET Core needs to know which scheme to use for what. We tell it to use the cookie scheme for all actions, except for challenge. The OIDC scheme is used for that. Finally, in the pipeline, authentication and authorization needs to be plugged in, and we configure all Razor pages to require an authenticated user, which in this setup means a valid authentication cookie. To see what's in the cookie, modify the index.cshtml page with this code. User here is a property of the page, which points to the claims principle the object containing the user's claims that are read from the cookie. All other non-user related data is contained in the properties object that is returned when the authenticate action is triggered. Remember, this is invoked now on the cookie handler. Final thing not to forget is to set the web client to listen on port 5002. Now run both identity provider and web client and the client should immediately redirect to the identity provider showing the login page. Login with Alice, password Alice, or Bob, password Bob. And we see the output of the index page. We see the subclaim, short for subject ID, that came back because the open ID scope was requested. But there's no sign of the claims in the profile scope. The reason is that by default, these are not included in the return token to keep the token nice and lean. But there's a user info endpoint at the identity provider where these can be automatically fetched when this property is set in the handler configuration. When I now rerun, the claims are there. Scrolling down to properties, there is some metadata as well as the saved tokens. Now let's add sign out functionality. I already told you about the cookie that is set by the client. 
but there's also a cookie set by the identity provider. It too has a cookie scheme configured with which it maintains the session. Just deleting the client cookie when signing out won't help because as soon as the OpenID Connect scheme is challenged, the identity provider will detect a valid session, skip the login page and deliver the tokens, automatically signing the user in. That behavior, by the way, also makes single sign-on possible. To let users sign out, add a page to the client and in the onGet, return the sign out action specifying the schemes we want to sign out to. And this will trigger the sign out scheme action on these schemes. For the cookie scheme, that means simply deleting the local cookie. But only the identity provider itself can clear its cookie. So the OIDC scheme will redirect to the end session endpoint at the identity provider. All what's left to do now is to add a link to the new page. A good place to do that is in the layout page. Now, when we run the applications again, log in and press the new link, you can see the end session endpoint in action. And when I now go back to the application, I see the login page as expected. And that's it for this video. Hope it helps. See you in the next video.